Peeps, you are back together, growth group video time. It is awesome to be together. I am at church. I am at the warehouse early on Sunday morning. The band is practicing, so if you hear a bunch of ruckus behind me, that's what that is. Um, man, it's a good time to be together. I'm thinking about our Saturday night service. Um, if, you don't have, if you've never been to Saturday night at 5 o'clock, it is the place to be. Um, check it out because I think it's one of our best kept secrets. It is the best kept secret at second place because God has just been moving on Saturday nights and, um, and it's just a great crowd and a good, good time together. Um, and really the only problem is, is that this weekend, if you're watching this, um, currently this week or, um, basically the week of February 29th, leap day, uh, it's actually, we don't have a Saturday night service. We have our 10th anniversary worship night. So we're going to be together. We're going to have the band has been working to, uh, to put together some awesome sets of music, some oldies, some some new ones, and um, some originals. And I'm really excited about it. So come out Saturday night. Starts at seven o'clock. Doors open at six fifteen. No Saturday night service this one week. And we're going to just celebrate all that God has done these past ten years, and also what God is going to do the next ten. And, and it may be something where, I'm going to tell you right now, come ready to worship, ready to praise, and seek that breakthrough for yourself or someone else, and really just, uh, yeah, be ready to go. And so I hope to see you there. We are in this series called Control Freaks. This is uh, week three of, of Control Weeks. Control Weeks. Control Freaks. And uh, it's uh, it's been good. Last week was Danielle talking about if you want to live in the kingdom, you cannot be the king. Um, first week I talked about Jesus is the head. And we are the body, Jesus is the head, you are not. And so today, um, this week, we're talking about that God has the power. Woo! We're going to use the old board as the power, you do not. And I think what's interesting about that is um, a great opening question that can really um, help us out. Just to get to know you a little bit better. It's a question you may have answered before, but man, it's an opportunity for you to answer it again. Is this idea of if you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? If you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? So I don't know what your favorite superhero is, but um, man, think about what it would be. Take some time to go around and uh, and answer that question. For me, um, I would feel I kind of feel like I, I'm I'm down with the flying um, because then I would be up. So. I think flying would be kind of a cool thing um, to be able to have that superpower. Uh, but also, I don't know, maybe maybe strength. Um, I don't know. There's a lot out there, you know what I'm saying? When it comes to superpowers, there's a lot of choices. So I'm going to go with flying right now um, just because. And maybe if I could combine, which is, which is probably, um, you know, an option for your group to decide, is um, I'd probably combine flying with super speed. Because then I could basically get anywhere in the world really fast. I wouldn't have to like walk there. So, um, so that's kind of like what I'm thinking. But you guys take some time, answer that question. What superpower would you want if you could have any superpower? Ready? Pause the video. All right. So, I hope that conversation was good, and I wanted you guys to um, tackle a passage that. Actually, I did refer to in the message this past weekend, which is John chapter 18, um, verses 10 and 11. And it's the passage where we see Peter um, kind of reach out when Jesus is betrayed with his sword, cut off the servant's um, ear, and, and what happens in that, in that, um, that whole situation. And I, I, I mentioned in the message that it's very interesting to me that Peter had been with Jesus um, side by side for three and a half years. And even though he had seen Jesus done all kinds of um, amazing things, um, miracles and healings and stop storms and all that other stuff, he still reached for his sword when he felt threatened and when he felt like he needed to make a move. And it's very interesting that he did that. Um, and so when you guys read that passage, those two verses, I think what's interesting to me is kind of like asking a couple of specific questions. Number one, what stands out to you? Um, maybe what Peter did stands out to you, but maybe what Jesus did stands out to you. Um, the, the second thing that I would say and ask is this. Uh, where do you see yourself in that scene? 
you know, are you, are you Peter? Are you the one that's like, ah, and you try to help the situation out? Are you Jesus, like super calm? I mean, it's hard to say you're Jesus, but you know what I mean? Like you're kind of the person in the scene that's kind of like, no, 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 like, hey, let this thing just play out. We're going to be fine. Um, or are you maybe somebody on the sideline? Like, are you somebody that's like, you know what? I'm not jumping in on this. Um, I'm going to kind of like just sit back and, and kind of let things go. Um, like, where are you in that whole situation? And, and then the last question would be, Obviously, we can see how Peter relied on his own power in that situation. But I would have you guys talk about what, what do we see Jesus doing and how is he relying on God's power in that scene? Um, because I think he is. I think that in that situation, Peter is obviously relying on his, his own power and Jesus is relying on God's power. And I guess I would just have you guys talk about what do you see and how do you see Jesus doing that um, as opposed to Peter? So take a minute right now, read that verse, John 18, 10 and 11, and you guys are going to just dig into that a little bit and see where it goes. All right, pause the video. All right, so we are going to be uh, looking at a passage in First Chronicles uh, chapter 29. So First Chronicles... I don't know how you abbreviate Chronicles, 29, verses 10 through 13, I believe. Yes, it is, 10 through 13. And that's going to be a passage I want you to, to look up. So when we when we read the Lord's Prayer, we, we say it out loud um, in maybe a, a church setting or whatever. We'll often, people will add, for thine is the power and the kingdom and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And it's interesting that that's added. I mean, that was added um, later. It wasn't typically, it wasn't um, included in the early manuscripts of like of Matthew. And, and so uh, we added that, but it's interesting because it seems like, and, and scholars would say, it looks like it came from this passage in 1 Chronicles 29, verses 10 through 13. And so I want you to turn your attention and not just read this in your group. But I would, I would ask you guys to really to declare it in your group um, and, and use it as a prayer. So take it slow and, and allow God to work through it. And then once you do that, I, I would even say, like, um, if you're comfortable, um, you, could, you could discuss it. You could ask, you know, okay, what really speaks to you in this? And, like, where is it that... Um, I think a great question would be, where is your, where does your life, where do you, where do you get tripped up most with this passage? Like, um, is it giving God, you know, the glory? Is it, is it remembering that he's sovereign? Is it remembering that he's in control or that he has the power and not you? Um, but I think what's really important to me um, is that we take some time to even, if you're comfortable, to pray um, and to just say, God, you know what, we just want this to be true. Um, of us, Lord, we would we would attribute all these things to you, and and really pray that scripture, just like David wrote it and, and wrote that prayer out, and and kind of like recorded that, like you pray it back to God yourselves. So take it, take a minute right now, First Chronicles twenty nine, ten through thirteen. Get after it. Ah. Awesome. So this last part um, is going to be a time when we kind of uh, turn this this topic outward. And we know and we see in Scripture that the way that we see God's power in our life is when we choose to let go, when we choose to surrender, when we choose to allow God to actually do the work. Um, and so I want you to, to kind of end tonight with... Uh, another passage of scripture, which is 2 Corinthians um, chapter 12, and it's verse 9. So 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. And this is uh, a passage where Paul is talking about him being weak, and the particular phrase that is said is that God said to him, my grace is sufficient for you, 
for my power is made perfect in weakness. And so it's this idea of perfect power, perfect power, but in weakness, our weakness. And so this week, um, you may have, you're going to have an opportunity to say to God, hey, this is an area of my life where I cannot do it. And I need your power to be made perfect because I am weak in this area. And so take a moment to reread that passage, but also take some time to go around your group and share, if you're comfortable, share where it is that you would, you know that you need to make a move um, outward towards a person or a situation that you really don't have what it takes to make it happen. I mean, this is a big deal because our weakness is hard to admit. Our weakness is something that is difficult to lay down. It's something that we're, man, we really want to do everything in our power to be able to make things right. But I think that what God's showing us this week is that there are some areas in our life where we definitely need to admit that we don't have the power and that's perfect because God's power is perfect and is made perfect in our weakness. And so, kind of as you close out tonight, take some time to share where it is that you feel like you're going to be outward focused, and you're going to say, "God, I can't do this on my own anymore. I'm going to, I'm going to choose to serve or forgive or be generous, whatever it might be." Those you, you've got it, guys. You know what God's speaking to your heart, um, and what that situation is where you've tried and tried and tried, and you've not been able to make that thing happen. And and I just think that it would be awesome to to kind of close with maybe your leader praying for those those um, those moves that are, are wanted to be made, or maybe you have um, several in your group that want to pray. But either way, um, I am so proud of you guys for getting together because honestly, growth group is where it's at. This is where we are able to do this type of work together, to be able to spur each other on, to be able to uh, be become, I guess, um, clarify, like how do we apply this to our own individual lives and to have a group of people that are kind of with us in this journey is there's just nothing better and so i'm so proud of you guys i'm so excited you guys are together um have a great rest of the night and i'm praying for you guys and we'll see you very very soon very very soon indeed